Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you would know that I'm currently in the middle of cataract surgery. The first eye is done and dusted and the second eye will be done in a few days. And thank you to everyone who has wished me well. I really appreciate it. The cataract surgery means that I am particularly interested in eyes at the moment. And that is quite fortuitous because there just so happens to be some claims circulating at the moment that the COVID vaccine can cause eye issues, in particular a condition known as retinal vascular occlusion. So in this video, we will be going back to the science and seeing if these claims are in fact valid. But before we do that, there's something else I related that I would like to address. A number of anti-vaxxers have suggested that my cataracts are related to the fact that I got the COVID vaccine. Nice try, anti-vaxxers, but I was actually diagnosed in January 2020, long before the vaccine was even available. But back to the main topic, retinal vascular occlusion, or RVO, which is less of a mouthful, occurs when one of the blood vessels in the retina of the eye develops a blockage. It can be either a complete or partial blockage, and it is more common in veins than arteries. And if left untreated, it can lead to blindness in the affected eye. Now, thankfully, RVO is quite rare, but there are some conditions that increase your risk. The first thing is age, which is unfortunately hard to avoid, and 90% of cases occur in patients over the age of 55 years. Other risk factors include hypertension or high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol, diabetes, taking the oral contraceptive pill, glaucoma, and smoking. But now there's a study suggesting that getting a COVID vaccine could also be a risk factor, although there are at least three other studies showing that it isn't. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's have a look at the study that is causing all the commotion. So this is a study here and it is published in NPJ Vaccines, which is part of the Nature Publishing Group and is quite a reputable journal. And according to this study, there is a 2.19 times increased risk of RVO following COVID vaccination. Now, when I was first alerted to this study, I had a quick squeeze and thought it looked fairly solid. But then I went back and had a closer look. And I found a major issue that means that the findings are completely invalid. So the study is utilising data from the TriNet X network, which is a database that includes over 95 million patients in the US. There's also patients from other countries, but they're not included in this particular study. They then selected patients who had had a lab-confirmed COVID negative test during the study period and excluded anyone who had also had a positive test. And this is quite a good thing to do because if you just excluded people who had had a positive test, you would miss a lot of people who just never had a test. They then divided who was left into vaccinated and unvaccinated and further excluded anyone who had had a diagnosis of RVO in the previous six months, as well as people taking various medications that would likely affect risk. And finally, they matched the people in the vaccinated group with people in the unvaccinated group by age, sex, race, comorbidities, medications, and previous hospitalisation. Now, this is all good stuff, but the devil is in the detail. I would like to draw your attention to one part of the flowchart. The non-COVID-19 group is said to consist of 833-177 vaccinated patients and 5,871,737 unvaccinated patients. 
which means 13% of them are vaccinated and 87% are unvaccinated. But we know that at the time the study was undertaken, 81% of the US population was vaccinated. So why are only 13% of this study group vaccinated? And remember, these are patients who have undergone COVID tests. So you would expect the proportion of vaccinated to be even higher because people who test for COVID are more likely to be taking COVID seriously and getting vaccinated. And in fact, if we look at the information that is available in the supplementary information of the study, we see that that is indeed the case. The proportion of the total database that is vaccinated is only 7.5%, which is even lower than the 13% vaccinated proportion in those that tested negative for COVID. And remember, the proportion of the US population that was vaccinated during the study period was 81%, just a bit more. So what's going on here? Well, there's a hint in the study's limitations. It says, lastly, TrinetX collects patient information only when the patient receives care from one of the participating healthcare organisations. The inclusion of care obtained from other institutions was not possible in this analysis. So basically, the TrinetX database only has vaccination information if the patients were vaccinated at a participating healthcare organisation. Based on the low numbers in the database, most people were obviously vaccinated elsewhere. And what this means is the study isn't comparing vaccinated people with unvaccinated people, it's comparing vaccinated people with vaccinated people, although obviously there will be likely some unvaccinated people in the second group. In other words, the study tells us absolutely nothing about whether COVID vaccination is associated with RVO or not. It does suggest, though, that people who were vaccinated by a Trinet X participating healthcare organisation and subsequently develop RVO are more likely to seek help from a Trinex X participating healthcare organisation than people who were vaccinated elsewhere. But that's actually just me speculating. There could be another reason for the difference between the groups. Luckily for us, other studies have also investigated whether there is an association between vaccination and RVO. And here's one of them. It was published in JAMA Ophthalmology and looked at over 3 million people who had received mRNA COVID vaccines. And interestingly, it also uses the Trinet X database. However, what they have done in this case is they compared people who are recorded in the database as receiving mRNA vaccines with people who are recorded as receiving either the influenza vaccine or the Tdap vaccine prior to the pandemic. And because they are not comparing people to people during the pandemic, it means that they haven't inadvertently classified COVID vaccinated people as COVID unvaccinated. And as you would expect, Patients were matched demographically based on age at vaccination, sex and race and ethnicity and matched medically by the proportion of patients with a diagnosis of diabetes, hypertension and hyperlipidemia. And they specifically compared the incidence of RVO within 21 days of the various vaccines. And the reason they chose 21 days is explained in the manuscript, which I will just read out for you. The 21-day time frame was decided based on the acute nature of symptoms reported in recent literature describing RVO presenting on average 14 days after COVID-19 vaccination. The 21-day time frame additionally made analysis of a second dose of COVID-19 vaccination group possible, as 21 days is the shortest recommended time frame to receive a second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine after the first dose. So what did they find? 
there was no significant difference in the relative risk of RVA diagnosis after the first dose of a COVID mRNA vaccine compared with our first dose of influenza vaccine or our first dose of Tdap vaccine. There was, however, a decreased relative risk after the second dose. And the authors suggest a number of possible reasons for the differences in risk between the two doses, which I will read out to you. The decreased risk for RBO after the second dose of the mRNA COVID-19 vaccination compared with the first dose may be explained by a true increased physiologic risk for RBO after the first dose. Possibly that our naive immune response is more likely to provoke a hyperviscous state related to IVO. However, this finding may also be explained by a hesitancy to receive the second dose based on symptoms that occur after the first dose, uncontrolled differences in patient populations, differences in patient insurance status, or differences in recording practices between the two events. The number of patients who were documented to have received a second dose of a mRNA COVID-19 vaccine was less than half of those who received a first dose. 1,108,006 versus 3,108,829. And they also did a post hoc analysis where they compared the risk of a new diagnosis of RBO within 21 days of a COVID-19 infection with the risk within 21 days of a first dose of a mRNA COVID vaccine. And they found there was a 4.25 times higher risk of RBO following a COVID infection. And there were also a couple of other studies that also show an increased risk of retinal issues following COVID infection. And I will provide links to them in the video's description in case you want to look into it further. Now, of course, the findings in this study don't necessarily mean there is no increased risk of RVO after COVID vaccination. It could mean that there is an increased risk after all vaccinations. However, there are other studies that show that this isn't the case. And we will just have a look at a couple of them now. This study was published in I, which is another journal that is part of the Nature Publishing Group. And in this case, they just looked at retinal vein occlusion, which is the most common form of retinal vascular occlusion. The study looked at patients in Italy, and it was a self-controlled case series looking at patients who had been diagnosed with retinal vein occlusion either before or after receiving a COVID vaccine. And what they did was they compared the incidence of retinal vein occlusion within 28 days of either a first or second dose of a COVID vaccine with the incidence in control periods. And what they found was there was no increased risk of retinal vein occlusion within 28 days of either a first or second dose of a COVID vaccine. They also did subgroup analyses by type of vaccine, gender and age, and also didn't see any association. So that's Italy. There was also a study undertaken in Germany looking at all types of RBO. And here they did something extra that provides further evidence that there is no association between vaccination and RBO. This is the study here, and it was published in the Journal of Clinical Medicine. In this study, they looked at data from 37 retinal clinics in Germany, and they did two analyses. Firstly, they did a case-by-case -case analysis to determine if there was any increase in RVO close to vaccination. And consistent with the previous study, there wasn't. But secondly, they compared the proportion of patients diagnosed with RVO that were vaccinated with the proportion of people vaccinated in the general German population using data from the Gutenberg Health Study. So here the vaccination status of people diagnosed with RVO was compared to population-based age and sex-matched controls from the Gutenberg Health Study. And the data was adjusted for 
diabetes, obesity, arterial hypertension, smoking, and the use of anticoagulation drugs. And as you can see, the confidence interval crosses the vertical dotted line in all cases, which means there is no association between COVID vaccination and any type of RBO. And no association was seen even if the data wasn't adjusted. Now, obviously, all of these studies have limitations, but we have three different studies based on three different methodologies using data from three different countries showing that there is no association between RVO and COVID vaccination. And the only study that appears to show there is an association turns out to be completely invalid, or as we sometimes like to say on this channel, bollocks. Added to that, several studies show that COVID is associated with an increased risk of RVO. So if you are generally concerned about RVO, you should get vaccinated. One more thing that I would like to draw your attention to is the reach of the studies that we covered in the video. The study that suggested there was a link between RVO and COVID vaccination was viewed 166,000 times and had an out metric score of 6,254. And that's a measure of how often it was mentioned in both traditional and social media. In contrast, the study showing that there was no association had significantly lower views and out metric scores. I couldn't fit the last one on the slide, but it was also low. And this, unfortunately, is always the case with studies that suggest issues with vaccines. But this does also reflect the fact that most vaccinated people know they have done the right thing and have moved on. They don't need constant reassurance that they made the right decision. Of course, if you do know someone who is concerned after reading the original study, please share this video with them. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video and of course thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little cindy who didn't contribute again a treat we really appreciate your support we will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future so if you'd like to see them please hit the subscribe button thank you